done this for the past 13 years, we picked up on a tiny reoccurring theme that internationally, traditional British food is seen as, well, being a little bit poop. An absolute steaming pile of horse manure stuck in the middle of the road. You drive straight over it, it goes into your tires, you try to get it out and it flicks in your eye. We refute that! How dare you! How dare you! How dare you! So today, we're gonna knock up a crazy dish from the British Isles, guaranteed to change your perception. Boys, today we're traveling to the northeast of England, Middlesbrough in particular, and you're gonna be cooking up a Parmo. Oh, brilliant. Amazing. You know what it is. I, was, I only recently found out about this and it's amazing. I made two new friends at a wedding from Middlesbrough. No, you didn't make friends. <laughs> I tried to make, make friends. friends. They insisted we had to make this dish. Oh, amazing. What is it? It's combining his favorite thing in the world with one of my favorite things in the world. I'm not going to show you any image spoilers. I'm going to show you an image spoiler, but it's basically a breaded, deep fried chicken or pork cutlet topped with tomato sauce or bechamel and always melted cheese. It's a chicken schnitzel pizza. It's like a chicken parmigiana. Yes. Right. But with a northeastern UK... Chicken parmigiana? <laughs> <laughs> Is that your best Sunderland? Mum. <laughs> no! <laughs> parmigiana. Oh, we're in deep waters already. <laughs> Yeah, chicken parmigiano vibes, but twisted in a way that only the northeast of England can. I have no idea how this got to Middlesbrough, but let's just make it. Okay, step one, bash out your chicken. So you are going to panne your meat. So bash it out, flour, eggs, breadcrumb, and then you're gonna move on to your sauce. And you need to make the choice between bechamel or tomato. I'll leave it up to you. Synchronised banging. You want it to be as thin as possible because we're going to deep fry this. I mean, you still want a bit of meat, don't you? Yeah. You want to cut through it, but yeah. And it's not clear who invented the pizza parmo, but it's believed to have been invented by an Italian immigrant living in Middlesbrough. Since then, taken off, become really popular, customised and spread to other parts of the north of the UK. Right, basic bechamel. We want big dollop of butter, big dollop of flour, cook the flour out, and then in with some milk. Then keep adding in milk, a little bit of time. It'll all come together, look doughy. Keep adding in milk until you get a thick white sauce. Shall we fry some chicken? Yes, Do it. yes, yes. Lovely. Woo! Would you like to hear an alternate account for the invention? Yeah. Sure. Nikos Harris, a Greek American Navy chef, he's also credited with creating the Parmo. He was injured while serving off the coast of France, was brought to the United Kingdom for medical treatment. He settled in Middlesbrough, eventually opened a restaurant called the American Grill. And in 1959, this is where it said that the Parmo was invented. Ah, oh, James. Oh, look at that. chicken. What's the thing about if you put a bunch of monkeys in the room, they'd finally write Shakespeare. Yeah. It yeah. feels like you put all the amazing food out in the world, this was going to happen. This was going to like happen. Like you're going to combine fried chicken and pizza at some point. <laughs> and on paper, there is nothing that isn't fantastic about no, this dish. This, this is every kind of wrong that makes it right. Curveball. Oh. And I realised what I just did. I put Shakespeare and Palmo <laughs> at the same level. Shakespeare and this, and this country Palmer. imports some incredible things. Yeah. Go throw a slight curveball into the mix. Ebers is going to uh, blind judge this at the end, he doesn't know what we're doing. He definitely doesn't know what we're doing. <laughs> he's going to taste it and he's going to review it. One, two, three or four stars. See, you thought there was swearing in the thumbnail. We are family friendly. You saying that's done? Yeah, man. Well, we have a thermometer, we could stick that in it. It'll carry on. Sorry. Or you could just yeah, no, splash it's, it's, it over it's me. It's quite hot. Yeah. <laughs> oh, it's going in the oven. Is it? It's going in the oven. Fine, well. it's definitely done then. Oh, Jamie, look at that. So you're going to have a tomato sauce as well? I think 
It's not pizza unless it's a tomato. Yeah, it's, I think you have to. I think it, it's chicken parmo with a pizza, so you have to go fresh milk, tomato, and cheese. Shall we talk sides? Because we haven't mentioned sides. Yes. And obviously, this dish needs sides. So this is usually served with crispy fries. So we've given you some crispy fries. And garlic sauce. Garlic sauce, so garlic mayo. Or like, mm. well, what, what's written here is garlic sauce or salad on the side. <laughs> <laughs> Wait a minute, this is, this is obviously from a kebab shop, isn't it? It's, I, it's I kebab know. garlic sauce. I don't yeah. know. What I can tell you is as the supermarket in the UK <laughs> started selling these, because they were so popular in the Northeast, they were selling 6,000 a week. No way. Wow. Yeah. Chicken's looking great. Do you want your next instruction? Yeah. Prepare your toppings, top and bake. Simple. <laughs> it's the best recipe ever. So what are you doing here, Baz? <laughs> what I'm doing here is something I never expected to do, is smother deep fried chicken with bechamel. What's the bechamel doing in this situation? Well, it's a creamy, buttery sauce, isn't it? It's thick, it's texture, it's adding silk. It's adding silk. <laughs> I mean, this is for Ebbers to tell us once he tastes it. So a bit of a clue, Baz, from the photos and the research, if you were to look top down at that chicken, yeah. you wouldn't see any of it for bechamel. No way! <laughs> it feels excessive. But I think that is what's right about this. I, I'm sure Ebbers will see it as purely in moderation. Mark, I've got some lovely chicken tenders for you as well. Oh, I love you! Oh, and chicken calamari. Yep, chicken calamari. If you get really good at this, you both could actually take part in the World Palmo Championships. The what? Is that There's a bit? A World Palmo Championships. Is that a bit like the World Baseball League <laughs> and the World? <laughs> right. You are doing nothing for international relations. I'm just saying. Yeah, it's held in Middlesbrough. 30 restaurants battle it out with a thrilling Palmo off held at the town hall to crown the winner. Now with the tomato, we've got chicken, bechamel, tomato, cheese. Yeah. Well, that's how a pizza would be done, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, stick to And it. then yeah. toppings. Yeah. And then toppings. And then bake. Cheeses, we've got stringy mozzarella cheese, we've got parmesan, traditional. Definitely has to go on there. Traditional. Then we've got red Leicester. North Watford Gap, isn't it? Leicester, Middlesbrough, they're about. Yeah. It's, they're about. No, it's, they're not. It's next, it's, it's it's next door. There, it's it? next door. It's ne Leicester, <laughs> Middlesbrough. Middlesbrough. It's not in the it's, middle. <laughs> it's, no, it's nowhere no, it's near. It's not in the middle. But it's a red cheese that looks nice. So, what are your thoughts cheese wise, Baz? Parmesan, bottom and top. Mozzarella and red Leicester in the middle. Oh, nice. Amazing. Yeah, yeah. You want that flick of that orange yeah, red but, Leicester coming through, don't you? But also, from a flavour perspective, you want the umami in different layers. This, yeah. this is why this is such a popular dish. Because of thinking like that. I like the fact that you're kind of sticking to the rules when it comes to how this is traditionally made. Because there was a restaurant in Sheffield that kind of reinvented it and the chef actually modified it to improve it. Ooh. And people kicked off. Ooh. And we let's, don't want any of that noise. Let's stick to traditions. Yes. Yeah. This is the point usually that I feel we should stop with the amount of cheese. But I'm only halfway. <laughs> Jamie, is this, I don't I don't know if this is gonna be room for toppings. Oh, spaff. That's, That's not working very well. I hate, hate, hate that you've made me feel how Ebbers <laughs> sometimes feels. I feel like I've got to stick with the Italian theme. Wow. British. We've got thick cut ham or pepperoni. Ham and pineapple, surely. No. We've got I, pineapple. No. Oh no, you've got pineapple. No, I'm not doing it. No, I can't. Right, that's that one. Then we'll do ham and, ham and pineapple. I mean, Italians are offended by the idea of ham and pineapple, but we're in new territory here, aren't we're we? Not, we're not making anything exactly. Italian. This, exactly. is, this is what already pre-exists. Which is the one that you're going to serve to Ebbers? What do you think's the one that, that he's going to like the most? We could do a little um, selection board, couldn't we? A smorgasbord. Smorgasbord. Mm. <laughs> oh, nice, Baz. Mm. So what we got here, Baz? Talk us through it. We've got the full menu. Out here, we've got um, pepperoni and basil, we've got olive, we've got ham and pie and we've got anchovy. Bit more cheese on top. Yeah. How are we feeling, lads? I'm feeling happy now. I mean... This is great. I've never felt more in my comfort zone. Are you starting to get an idea as to why this is so popular? 
100%. Um, it's nearly keto. <laughs> <laughs> Apart from the breadcrumbs on the chicken, I mean, that could be a really great keto It's a well-balanced meal, isn't it? Yeah. Give it a bit of a punch, you know? Yes. A punch of punch bay leaf. Punch of bay leaf, perfect. <laughs> Ben's not gonna know what's hitting. Whoa, that flavour! Baz, you've done a great job. Mm. I'm gonna put these in the oven for a couple of minutes mm -hmm. and we'll get them into the sexes. Mm. Well, I cook. Let's make a garlic mayo. If you're loving the sound of this, you can check it out on our brand new sorted food tab on Sidekick. Scan the QR code now or click the link in the description box below. Ebbers. This is going to be a good breakfast. Oh. Oh. So, the boys have knocked up a delicacy from Middlesbrough. Yes. We would like you to react to it, talk about it, taste it, and then we'd like you to rate it one, two, three, or four stars. This is all personal. You're a chef. You know what you're talking about. And I've been to Middlesbrough. Lift the cloche. <laughs> Chicken and chips. Boys, do you want to tell Ebers what he has there? Ebers, in front of you, you have the now world famous Parmo. Oh, don't forget for your chips. Traditionally put together, as is popular, with a garlic mayo and french fries. This is a deep fried chicken cutlet with bechamel sauce, cheese, of two varieties, three varieties. Mm. Tomato topped, sauce. Tomato sauce topped like a pizza. This is hugely popular in Middlesbrough. We'd like you to see if you can work out what all the fuss is about. What cheeses are we talking about? Oh, Evers, you've got mozzarella, you've got Parmigiano Reggiano, and of course, Red Leicester. That was my question, was how regional are these ingredients? We had a conversation about the geography between Leicester and Middlesbrough, and decided they were both north of London, so that's probably why they use it. Jamie said that. It's, it's red, it's good for the colour. If it's the traditional stuff, a nice sort of spark and hoe, anato kind of vibe, I'm on board. You want the cheese to take away from the experience, you want to overpower the dish. Its beauty is its simplicity. What I'm baffled by is why it's become so popular in that one region. I'm underwhelmed because I was expecting more of a surprise under the cloche, like a slappy. It's just, it's just good, delicious food. For the people I've met from Middlesbrough, they rave about it and they're so proud of it. It's like, you've got to try this. They've knocked up some other right, versions. Right, I get you. So what this actually is, is Middlesbrough going, we like pizza, we like fried chicken. Let's put a pizza on fried chicken. Yes, that's where we've got to. With bechamel for some unknown reason. It's a, it's a, well, no, 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 a good, good pizzas have a white sauce mm. as opposed to tomato. The fact that this has got both, I think is a wonderful hybrid. Let's dive in and eat some of the stuff. You eat the basil? No, the bailey. Mm. You get a bit of that. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't been to Middlesbrough for some time and I don't mm. remember mm. having this or seeing it be such a big thing. And that said, you can't really go wrong by merging two firm favourites. Yeah. The pizza, done badly with three cheeses, and fried chicken, ruined by making it soggy. <laughs> I think this is the epitome of one of those things that's become well known in an area or invented in an area, and it's almost like the myth and the legend has excelled it mm. above perhaps its taste status. Yeah. But again, fish and chips, simple, delicious, we rave about it. Yeah. And I think this is that equivalent. It's not the best food in Britain, but it's obviously become synonymous with that location and therefore the locals absolutely love it. All right, Ebers, in your personal opinion, if you had to rate this dish one to four stars, what would you give it? I've got no idea what that scale stretches from or to. <laughs> well, this is a time to invent. But I would say, one star, one star, one star, two star. Stick to the classic. It's a two star meal. Two star meal. Oh, two star meal. One, two, three, four. I was like, five no. stars. I never okay. <laughs> I think these off piece ones aren't as good as just keeping it classic. It is hearty, and it's the kind of thing you've just got to try. Yeah, you've got to try it. You've got to believe it. You've got to love it. Two out of four stars. You've heard it straight from the chef's mouth. But if you're from Middlesbrough, let us know why this is so amazing. Wax lyrical in the comments. And let us know what else should we be cooking up next? What is your favourite? 
British mm. dish that we should be serving to Ebers? I think you just gotta you gotta try it once. One and done. I think you're kind of right on that. We'll get Kush and the Food team to put it on the psychic app. Still eating. Oh, there we go. Yeah. This made the app.